dear listeners i'm dikshita and you're listening to giis podcast the smartcast giis is well renowned for its nine gems framework that's ingrained in our smart campus ecosystem to enhance the learning experiences of the students the framework provides maximum leverage to our approach of balancing academics with extracurricular activities and universal values to shape our students into well-rounded and responsible citizens of the future. Our today's guest is an extraordinary alumina and a great testament to our Nine Gems framework. She pursued her studies at the New York Film Academy in Australia, and she is extremely passionate about what she does. Her motto in life is to enlighten more people to chase their dreams. I warmly welcome the highly talented and inspirational Runal Maestri on our show today. It's a great pleasure to have you here with us today. Your aspirations and dedication towards filmmaking is simply amazing and fantastic. Thank you so much for having me here and giving me this opportunity. I'm truly honored to have this conversation with you all. Now, let us jump right into what our listeners are here for. First of all, how has your journey been and when did you realize that a filmmaker is who you want to be? First of all, thank you for your question. And starting with my family background, I belong to an extremely academic family. My family is very academically oriented as my father is a PhD in chemistry and the rest of my family members are pursuing their education in medicine, engineering, or either computer science. So belonging to such a smart family and always being around people who only spoke about science, thinking of going into arts was definitely out of question. Forget filmmaking. So during my initial childhood days, I thought of being a doctor But then I was too scared of injections, so that wasn't the best option. Then my father said I should probably go into marketing because I'm a chatterbox. So he thought I'd probably be good at selling products. And filmmaking as a career option was just never a choice. But then the one thing that was always common in my family is that we all loved to watch movies. And I have always looked forward to that Friday night when I will get to be in a theater and do nothing more than be in that world. And I was so into watching movies that my parents told me that I get distracted very easily. But then when I'm watching a film, I'm just looking at the screen. I don't look anywhere else. And I was so into it that I didn't even bother getting up from my seat during those interval times that we had in India. And up until now, I'm very proud of this, that I haven't missed even one title of a film. But this love wasn't taken seriously. It was just looked at as a hobby because everybody loved to watch movies. But then when I turned 15, I watched Harry Potter And that's the day I embarked on my journey towards becoming a filmmaker because I thought to myself, hey, if J.K. Rowling can possess that power of visual intelligence where she makes the audience thrive to believe in an imaginary world, then why can't I? So Harry Potter really made me believe that the world is full of magic and we just need to find it. And since then, there has been no looking back. I am currently in my third year of filmmaking right now. And every morning, I look forward to going to class and learning something new about the movie world. And I don't regret one bit of my life as it has just been great since the day I decided to become a filmmaker. It's truly great because from a very young age, 15 years until now, you still carried on to chase your dreams. So it's really great and so inspirational to me and I'm sure our listener friends too. And so your determination really amazes me. And um, my next question for you would be, what were the initial steps that you took 
to becoming a step closer to the film world. What activities did you participate in when you were still in school? Um, that's a very great question because a lot of people ask me that. Um, so my father had a few contacts in India who I spoke to. And one of my family friends suggested that loving movies and making them are two very different things because everybody loves to watch movies, but not everyone has that kind of passion to make them. So I should maybe attend a workshop and do some more research before taking the next step. And then I came across this website that holds filmmaking workshops in Sydney, which is called the Australian Film Television Radio School. And I attended that workshop and made a 10 minute long short film, which was also shown at the Global Indian International School. And this was with the help of industry professionals, which made it even better. And during that workshop, I got to learn all aspects of filmmaking, starting from screenwriting, direction, sound, cinematography and editing. So what we did is each one of us pitched a story idea to the class and amongst 20 such ideas, two best ideas get selected and then we make a film on it. So my job was to be a cinematographer and sound person. And I still remember the first day when we all screened action on a film set because that feeling just gave us all goosebumps and it was like a dream come true. And this workshop really helped um, broaden my horizon of information when it comes to movies and made me even more firm on my decision of being a filmmaker. That's really great. I'm sure you would have felt so excited to shout that action out loud. Um, so as you said before that your parents and like your whole family was very academic oriented. And so amongst those families like that, filmmakers are quite like a rare breed. So was it difficult to like explain to your family members at first about your career choice? So how did they take this news? No, thankfully, it never was. And it never is explaining my passion to my parents. My parents have always been extremely supportive of my dreams and my happiness was all that mattered to them. The first time I told my father that this is what I want to do, he didn't know what to say at first. And I think the biggest issue is that not many people are aware of the challenges and hard work involved in being a filmmaker. And up until now, not many people know what I actually do. So the only concern my parents had was if filmmaking had enough options for further education. So when they realized that, yes, film schools exist and I can pursue my bachelor's, master's and even PhD if I want in filmmaking, after that, there was no stopping. So they have always been financially, emotionally and mentally available for my dreams. The one thing that my parents always taught me is the people who are always going to stay in your life with you are your parents. So as long as you have their support, cultural and societal norms are just passing chapters of a judgmental book. So it's sad that we still live in a world where our marks define our dreams we still have this preconceived notion, especially in India, that if a child gets 90%, they go into science. And if not, it's art and commerce. And to give out this message also, a movie was needed, which is obviously three idiots. And I feel arts and commerce are looked at as sympathy fields for students. And I still receive comments like, my dreams are pretty big for a woman and that Filmmaking is a very easy thing to do. I believe that nothing is easy in this world. And I really hope and really plead to all your parents out there to support your children's dreams and seriously motivate them to listen to their heart because each one of us have got the wings to fly. But most importantly, our parents need to teach us to fly. So yeah.
I couldn't agree with you more. I know that parents play a very important uh, role in children's lives. So it's very important for them to be extremely supportive and to provide whatever the child needs in order for them to grow and develop as a person. So my next question for, to you would be, um, what are some tips that you would strongly recommend to the budding filmmakers in our school? I don't know where to start when it comes to giving tips, but I would strongly recommend to continue dreaming, continue being in love with world of movies. This journey is definitely not easy, but like late Irfan Khan sir said that dreams aren't the ones that you think of when you sleep. They are the ones that don't let you sleep. So speaking from my personal experience there were days when i hated myself for being me and there were days when i did not feel good about myself as i had very low self esteem when i was in school and my teenage years were very difficult because i was bullied for my grades but i just like to tell you all that these grades that you score are just numbers that vanish into air once you're out of school so do not be disheartened when you don't get a trophy for not scoring an a star all that you need to do is follow your heart be passionate about everything that you do be confident in your own skin and when i was feeling down i read this quote which really uplifted my confidence and made me love myself even more and it says that our left brain is in charge of all the logical thinking and our right brain is in charge of all the creative thinking so aren't all of us unique and different in our own way some of us have a weaker left brain whereas some of us have a weaker right brain but does my choice of education in arts with the creative brain make me less smart over my choice of education in science which needs a more logical brain so students unfortunately because of this belief that science is the best thing in the world all around the world we are denied our choice of education and forced to enroll into subjects that we don't even feel passionately about so it's high time that we understand every field is different every subject is different and most importantly every subject is needed so being better at science doesn't make me the smart one and loving arts doesn't make me the one below so all you kids out there just accept yourself and most importantly love yourself do not let these societal standards define your worth ever in your life Thank you so much. I'm sure our listener friends and even myself, I felt so insp- inspired by the words you've just given. It really uplifted me. So thank you so much. And also, I'm sure that all the listener friends would like to know what goes behind the scenes of the films that they see because uh, films look so perfect when we see them. So what actually goes behind the scenes and what are the most interesting things that you noticed when you first arrived at at the New York Film Academy. I love this question and I don't know where to start when it comes to speaking of behind the scenes of movies. Yes, it has always been very interesting be- being behind the camera and then seeing your hard work and your it's like your child. Your movie is like your child and then when you see your baby on the big screen, you feel so happy. But for you all i can try sharing a few insights into the movie world and what i find really fascinating is the scale at which movies are made and how diverse each department is because everybody is doing something on a film set there is a writing team there is a direction team there is a camera team lighting team sound team uh department art department team study stunts team special effects team and editing team and there is also a person hired on a film set to carry the hard disk of all the shots that are being saved in it and make sure that it gets safely to the editor and i feel this person is the most important person on a set because if they lose that hard disk we have to shoot 
everything again. So they really need to make sure that we have enough backups. So there are around five phases involved in film production. Phase one is development, and this includes creating a concept, coming up with an idea, and writing the script. And this is also when the budget of the film is decided, locations are decided, storyboards are created to visualize the film. And then phase two is pre-production. This is when actors are hired, crew members need to be lined up, a schedule is set, and the whole world is created. Third phase, which is the most important phase, is production. And that's when our cameras get rolling. Production is extremely difficult and stressful as things change every day. The budget might change if things go wrong and we need to reshoot things. Weather can be a problem as if it's raining, it can really damage the equipment. I feel that filmmaking is all about collaboration and effective communication. And it is needed the most during the production time. The fourth phase is post-production. And this is when all the editing happens, special effects come in, and computer graphics come in as well. And this is also when the final cut of a movie is viewed by our directors and producers and given a green signal for the fifth phase, which is distributing the film all around the world. So this is just 0.0001% of the hard work that goes into making movies. And I'd just like to request all listeners and everybody out there, this is a humble request from an aspiring filmmaker that please kindly sit down and watch the end credits uh, just as a gesture of respect for all those 2,000 or more people who didn't sleep for nights to make that two hour long film just to entertain you. But, and then at least you all will be aware of the job titles of filmmakers. So this is just a humble request from me to all of you. I mean, I know that even a small scene, there's so much like hard work put into it. So it's very important for all of us who's watching the film to appreciate it and respect all the hard work and determination put into it. So thank you for sharing with us like all those five phases that goes into filmmaking. It probably makes all of us aware of the hard work that is put into it. Lastly, I would like to ask you, how do you wish to make an impact on the world with your films and how do you aim to work towards it? Um, Personally, I really wish to make movies for women. I am a strong feminist and I wish to share more stories made by women for women because I feel we live in an extremely patriarchal world, even in 21st century, where a woman has to work twice as hard for half as much. Women have been suffering for way too long, and it's high time that we raise our voices and learn to fight back. Speaking of India, young girls in India are still forced to get married at a young age, stay at home and take care of their family. And they're still expected to know names of all kitchen spices, regardless if they have a degree or not. And unfortunately, India has also been ranked as the most unsafe country for women, where infants and old women continue getting raped. And the word periods is still taken in whispers with a woman's body always being objectified. So my wish is to inspire more girls out there to dream and not suppress their voice due to the atrocities caused by men. And through the movies I make, I want to stand for equality and give out the message of a young girl's dreams not being taken for granted because she's a girl. Other than this, I have also been working on a book and I have been writing poetry since past one year. And in about two to three months, I have a book that will be getting published with all of my poetry is written in it. And it's called The Unspoken Words from Childhood to Adulthood. And I hope for you all to enjoy reading it as much as I enjoyed writing it. And I would like to end this by just saying that it has been said that next to hunger and thirst, 
our most basic human need is storytelling so keep telling stories and keep watching movies thank you Thank you so much for being with us today, Mrinal. I'm sure our listeners would have a lot to take away from your amazing and inspiring words. Thank you for motivating students like us to chase our dreams. Um, thank you so much for having me here again and giving me this opportunity. I think for students, the most important thing is to be recognized and to be motivated. And such opportunities really mean a lot to us. So thank you so much for letting me share my story with more people out there and I'm sure that it means a lot to both me and my family and to all our listener friends out there nothing worth having comes easy so remember to work hard with all your heart and you would be able to fulfill your dreams just like Mrinal did with that we come to the end of today's smartcast please subscribe share like and comment below Follow us on SoundCloud slash GIIS Smartcast. Do feel free to share in your suggestions for future podcasts. Thank you so much for listening to the GIIS Smartcast. This is Deekshita Ganapati Raman signing off. Goodbye and stay safe.